in the dimly lit corners of ancient tales, where shadows danced and moonlight whispered through the leaves, there existed beings of great power and mystery, witches. These figures were not mere figments of imagination, but integral parts of the mythology that shaped cultures and beliefs. They stood at the crossroads of the known and the unknown, bridging human fears and hopes with the supernatural. Witches in ancient myths were far from the stereotypical cackling crones or charming enchantresses we sometimes think of today. They were complex characters who played vital roles in their respective mythologies, often embodying both creation and destruction, life and death. These figures were deeply connected to the natural world and held sway over its forces. They were revered, feared, and sometimes misunderstood, reflecting the duality of their powers. In Greek mythology, for example, witches like Hecate represented the mysterious and often frightening power of magic. Hecate, with her ability to command the spirits of the dead and wield potent spells, was a figure of immense respect and dread. She wandered the darkened paths of the world, holding knowledge that was both enlightening and terrifying. Her presence was a reminder of the thin veil between the human world and the shadowy realms beyond. Across the waters in ancient Ireland, the Morrigan was another witch-like figure who embodied the complex nature of power. She was a goddess of war and fate, often appearing as a crow or raven, creatures associated with death and transformation. The Morrigan was not merely a harbinger of doom, but a symbol of the cyclical nature of life, where endings were but preludes to new beginnings. Her role in the mythology underscored the belief that death and destruction were intertwined with renewal and growth. The themes surrounding ancient witches were as varied as their portrayals. One common thread was their connection to the natural world. Many of these witches were depicted as wielding control over elements like fire, water, and earth. They had the ability to influence weather patterns, fertility, and the harvest, reflecting humanity's deep dependence on nature and its cycles. This connection to the natural world was both a source of power and a point of contention, as it often placed these figures at odds with societal norms and religious structures. Another powerful theme was transformation. Witches in ancient myths were often associated with shapeshifting and metamorphosis. Circe, the enchantress from Greek mythology, could transform men into animals with a mere flick of her wand. This ability to alter reality reflected a deeper understanding of the fluidity of existence and the power to change one's fate. Similarly, in the Slavic tales, Baba Yaga's ability to fly in a mortar and wield magical powers emphasized the boundless nature of witchcraft and the mysterious ways it could impact the world. Fear and respect were also central motifs in the stories of ancient witches. Their powers could be both a blessing and a curse. They were often portrayed as wielding knowledge that was too dangerous or profound for ordinary people to grasp. This knowledge could bring about great prosperity or devastating consequences. The fear of their power was not just about what they could do, but also about the unpredictable nature of their influence. Ancient societies, with their limited understanding of natural phenomena, often saw witches as embodiments of both their greatest hopes and their deepest fears. The role of witches was not confined to the dark or ominous. In many cultures, they were seen as healers and protectors. In some Native American traditions, certain women were revered for their healing abilities and their deep connection to the spiritual world. Their knowledge of herbs and natural remedies was a vital resource for their communities. Similarly, in ancient Egypt, the role of magical practitioners included both protective and beneficial aspects, helping to ensure the well-being of individuals and society. Ancient myths and legends about witches were not just stories, but reflections of the human condition. They spoke to our desires for control over the uncontrollable, our fears of the unknown, and our need for both protection and understanding. These figures, with their powerful presence and enigmatic nature, represented the complex interplay between humanity and the forces beyond our comprehension. Through these tales, we can glimpse the profound impact that witches had on ancient societies. They were not just characters and stories, but symbols of the deep and often contradictory aspects of life. Their magic, their connection to the natural world, and their influence on fate and transformation continue to captivate and inspire reminding us of the enduring mystery and wonder that lies at the heart of human experience.
in the still of the night, when the moon casts its silvery light over a world both familiar and strange, there is a presence that stirs the shadows. Hecate, the Greek goddess of magic and witchcraft, stands as a figure of haunting grace and formidable power. Her story is one of ancient mystery, woven with threads of awe and fear, and her influence stretches across the fabric of mythology like a silken thread binding the known to the unknown. Hecate's origins are as enigmatic as the dark corners she is often associated with. She emerged from the mists of time as a deity of great importance, her roots tracing back to the ancient pre-Greek deities. The Greeks themselves saw her as an ancient goddess, possibly linked to earlier traditions and beliefs. Her association with the moon and the night gave her an air of mystery and authority that set her apart from other deities. She was the keeper of secrets, the guardian of thresholds, and the guide through the hidden realms of the supernatural. Her worship was deeply rooted in the belief that she held dominion over magic and the unseen forces of the world. Ancient rituals and offerings were made to Hecate to seek her favor or to appease her. Shrines dedicated to her were often found at crossroads, where the mundane met the mystical, symbolizing her role as a liminal figure, standing between the realms of the living and the dead. These crossroads were places of both danger and potential, reflecting the duality of her nature. Her power could be a blessing or a curse, depending on how one approached it. Hecate was not merely a goddess of dark magic, she was also associated with the lunar aspects of life. In her role as a moon goddess, she was linked to the cycles of the night and the changing phases of the moon. This connection gave her an aura of timeless wisdom, as if she was privy to the secrets that lay hidden beneath the surface of the everyday world. Her presence in myths was both compelling and chilling, a reminder of the vast and mysterious forces that lie just beyond the edge of human understanding. One of the most poignant myths involving Hecate is her association with the story of Persephone. When Persephone was abducted by Hades and taken to the underworld, it was Hecate who came to her aid. The goddess of magic guided Demeter, Persephone's mother, through the dark realms to find her daughter. This myth illustrates Hecate's role as a guide and protector, not just in the realm of magic, but also in the personal trials faced by the gods and mortals alike. Her involvement in this story highlights her deep connection to both life and death, and her power to navigate the spaces in between. Another striking tale involving Hecate is the myth of her transformation from a figure of light to one of darkness. Once a benevolent deity of the moon and magic, she was gradually cast into a more ominous role as myths evolved. In some stories, Hecate was depicted as a fierce and vengeful goddess, wielding her powers to exact justice or punishment. This shift in perception reflects the complexity of her character, embodying the idea that magic can be both a force for good and a source of great danger. Hecate's influence extended beyond the realm of mythology into the lives of ordinary people. In ancient Greece, people would leave offerings of food and drink at crossroads to appease her, hoping to gain her favor or protect themselves from her wrath. These offerings were often left in the dead of night, a time when her presence was believed to be strongest. The rituals performed in her name were filled with a sense of reverence and trepidation, acknowledging the profound power she held over the unseen aspects of existence. Her image was often depicted with three faces, a symbol of her ability to see in all directions and to traverse the boundaries between different worlds. This trinity of faces represented her ability to guide and protect, but also served as a reminder of her potential to confront and challenge. Each face could gaze into the past, present, and future, embodying the cyclical nature of life and the ever-present mystery of what lies ahead. Hecate's presence in myth and worship was a reflection of humanity's need to understand and control the forces that lay beyond their grasp. Her dual nature, both a protector and a formidable force, captured the essence of magic as something both wondrous and potentially dangerous. The stories of Hecate remind us of the delicate balance between light and darkness, knowledge and ignorance, life and death. Her legacy endures as a testament to the enduring fascination with the mystical and the powerful, and the profound impact that a single figure can have on the collective imagination. On a remote island, cloaked in the mist of ancient legend, lives Circe, the enchantress of Homer's Odyssey. Her story is one of magic and transformation, where every spell she casts carries the weight of wonder and dread. 
Cersei is not just a character from old tales, she embodies a deep and haunting power that captivates the imagination even today. Cersei was a daughter of the sun god Helios, and her lineage granted her a mastery over magic that set her apart from other figures of her time. Her home was on the island of Aiaia, a place where the natural world seemed to bow to her will. Here, she wove enchantments that could transform reality itself. Her magic was not merely an extension of her power, it was an integral part of who she was. With a wave of her hand or a chant of incantations, Cersei could alter the very fabric of existence, turning men into beasts and bending nature to her whims. Her powers were both wondrous and terrifying. The most famous tale of Cersei is her encounter with Odysseus and his crew. When Odysseus and his men arrived on Aiaia, they were greeted not by a friendly host, but by a formidable enchantress who wielded her magic with an almost casual cruelty. She transformed the sailors into swine, a spell that encapsulated her ability to alter form and essence. The men, now trapped in their animalistic forms, were rendered powerless and vulnerable, a chilling reminder of Circe's control over their fate. Odysseus, however, was not so easily subdued. With the help of Hermes, who provided him with a magical herb to protect against Circe's spells, he confronted her. When Circe's magic failed to work on him, she was forced to confront her own limitations and the strength of the human spirit. This encounter marked a turning point in her story, revealing a more complex side to her character. She was not merely a malevolent sorceress, but someone who could be persuaded and even won over. Circe's story did not end with her transformation of Odysseus's men. After their liberation, she became a guide and ally to Odysseus, offering him crucial advice on how to navigate the challenges ahead. This shift from antagonist to helper reflects the multifaceted nature of her character. Her power was not simply destructive, but also capable of fostering understanding and assistance. Her influence extends far beyond the pages of Homer's epic. Throughout history and literature, Circe has been a symbol of enchantment, danger, and transformation. She appears in countless works, embodying the allure and perils of magic. In Shakespeare's The Tempest, the spirit Ariel echoes Circe's magical transformation of the natural world. In modern literature, Circe's character has been reimagined and explored in various ways, often focusing on her inner life and struggles. The novel Circe by Madeline Miller, for instance, delves into her backstory, giving her a voice and a narrative of her own, reflecting her as a figure of empowerment and deep emotional complexity. Circe has also made her mark on art and culture, where she is often depicted as a beautiful yet dangerous woman, surrounded by animals or magical symbols. Her image is a powerful reminder of the seductive nature of magic and the potential consequences of its misuse. In these portrayals, she embodies both the fear and fascination that magic inspires, capturing the essence of the unknown and the transformative power it holds. Her legacy is a testament to the enduring power of myth to shape our understanding of the world. Circe's story continues to resonate because it touches on universal themes of transformation, power, and redemption. Her character, with her formidable abilities and complex motivations, remains a compelling symbol of the interplay between magic and human experience. In the heart of ancient myths, where magic intertwines with fate, stands Medea, the sorceress of Calchas whose story is etched with intense emotions and profound transformation. Her name evokes a sense of awe and trepidation, as her life was marked by extraordinary power and tragic choices. Medea's tale begins in the land of Calchas, a place steeped in enchantment and mystery. She was a princess with a lineage that granted her not only royal status, but also formidable magical abilities. Her skills in witchcraft were renowned, and her deep knowledge of potions and spells made her a figure of both wonder and fear. Her magic was not just a tool, but a reflection of her inner turmoil and strength. Her story takes a dramatic turn when the Argonauts, led by Jason, arrive in Calchas on a perilous quest for the Golden Fleece. This fleece was no mere treasure, it was a symbol of kingship and divine favor. Jason's mission to obtain it seemed nearly impossible, as it was guarded by a fierce dragon and held by King Eats, Medea's father. Jason's quest would have failed if not for Medea's intervention. Struck by his bravery and charm, Medea fell deeply in love with Jason. 
Her love, however, came with a price, a dangerous pact that bound her to Jason and his mission. Medea used her magic to help Jason achieve the impossible. She cast spells to lull the dragon to sleep and aided him in overcoming the trials set by her father. Her assistance was a mix of love and betrayal, a reminder of the complex nature of her character. The path Medea chose was paved with sacrifices. By aiding Jason, she not only defied her father and her homeland, but also set herself on a course of personal agony and vengeance. Her love for Jason transformed into a consuming obsession, and her loyalty became intertwined with her magical abilities. Medea's actions on behalf of Jason demonstrated her immense power, but also hinted at the darkness that would follow. The themes of revenge and transformation are central to Medea's story. Once Jason had secured the Golden Fleece and returned home, Medea's role did not diminish. Instead, it evolved into one of profound and tragic consequence. Jason, once the recipient of her magical aid and love, betrayed her trust by marrying another woman. This act of betrayal ignited Medea's deepest fears and rage. Driven by a thirst for revenge, Medea unleashed her powers in ways that were both heart-wrenching and devastating. Her revenge was not only personal, but also symbolic of the broader themes of transformation. Medea's actions became a powerful, if horrifying, testament to the depths of her hurt and anger. She used her magic to exact a brutal retribution. She killed Jason's new bride and, in a final act of revenge, murdered her own children. This tragic act was not only a personal vendetta, but also a reflection of her complete transformation from a loving partner to a figure of dread. Her story highlights the chilling reality of transformation, how profound love and betrayal can turn into destructive rage. Medea's ability to wield magic so devastatingly illustrates the powerful and often uncontrollable nature of her emotions. Her transformation from a helper to an avenger embodies the theme that power and love are intertwined with deep, sometimes destructive, emotions. Medea's tale continues to captivate and haunt because it speaks to the raw, often painful aspects of human experience. Her power, her love, and her vengeance are all driven by intense emotions that transcend time. Her story is a powerful reminder of how the forces of magic and personal turmoil can shape destinies and transform individuals into legends of both awe and fear. In the echoes of ancient Ireland, there is a name that resonates with both awe and dread, the Morrigan. She is a figure who stands at the crossroads of magic and mayhem, embodying the fierce power of the triple goddess and commanding a profound respect that echoes through the ages. Her presence is as intense as it is mysterious, embodying the raw forces of war and fate that shape the world. The Morrigan is not just one being but a triad of goddesses, each aspect representing a different facet of her power. She is often depicted as a trio of sisters, often named Bad, Macha, and Nemain, each embodying different aspects of the same potent force. Together, they weave a tapestry of fate and destruction that stretches over battles and legends. Their shape-shifting abilities are legendary. They could transform into crows or ravens, creatures that symbolize death and foreboding. In these forms, they could soar over battlefields, their presence both a harbinger of doom and a symbol of transformation. Her shape-shifting was not merely an act of magic, but a profound expression of her power. By changing form, the Morrigan could traverse between the worlds of the living and the dead, influencing events from a vantage point that others could not access. Her ability to become a crow or raven allowed her to observe and influence the outcomes of battles and conflicts, providing guidance or sowing chaos according to her will. This transformation made her an omnipresent force, one that could strike fear into the hearts of warriors and kings alike. The Morrigan's prophetic abilities were as striking as her shapeshifting. She was known for her visions and predictions, which could foretell the outcomes of battles and the fates of heroes. Her prophecies were not mere glimpses of the future, but powerful warnings that could alter the course of events. To hear the Morrigan's prophecy was to hear the voice of destiny itself, echoing with a sense of inevitability and power. Her words carried the weight of fate, shaping the actions of those who sought to understand or resist her foretellings. Her connection to war was profound and multifaceted. The Morrigan was not just a goddess of battle, but also a figure who represented the chaos and brutality of war. 
She could incite conflict or grant victory, depending on her whims or the favor she chose to bestow. Her presence on the battlefield was a powerful symbol, one that could turn the tide of combat and determine the fate of warriors. Her association with war was not just about the physical aspects of battle, but also about the deeper, spiritual consequences of conflict. She embodied the belief that war was intertwined with fate and that the outcomes were often beyond human control. Yet, the Morrigan's role was not solely destructive. Her connection to fate and war also reflected a deeper understanding of the cyclical nature of life and death. She represented the idea that endings were simply beginnings in another form, and her presence was a reminder of the ever-turning wheel of destiny. Her shape-shifting and prophetic abilities underscored her role as a guide through the tumultuous waters of life and conflict, offering both warnings and wisdom. The Morrigan's influence extended beyond mythology into the cultural consciousness of ancient Ireland. Her stories were not merely tales of supernatural power, but reflections of the values and beliefs of a people deeply connected to the forces of nature and the cycles of life. Her presence in the myths highlighted the reverence and fear that surrounded the concepts of war and fate, illustrating the complex relationship between human agency and the forces beyond their understanding. Her legacy endures in modern times, symbolizing the powerful connection between magic, fate, and the natural world. The Morrigan remains a figure of fascination, representing the profound and often unsettling truths about the nature of power and destiny. Her shape-shifting and prophetic abilities, along with her connection to war, make her a compelling and enduring symbol of the raw forces that shape our lives and the world around us. In the mist-shrouded highlands of Scotland, where the ancient stones whisper of bygone days, there exists a figure both feared and revered, the Caelich. Known as the Scottish Hag, she is a powerful embodiment of the land's rugged beauty and fierce temper. Her presence in Highland folklore is as ancient as the mountains themselves, and her story carries the chill of the Highland winds and the weight of timeless mystery. The Caelich is often depicted as an old woman with a wild and formidable appearance. Her features are weathered and lined, reflecting a life intertwined with the harshness of nature. Despite her age, there is a strength and resilience in her that belies her appearance. She commands respect and awe, not just for her appearance, but for her deep connection to the land and its cycles. In Scottish folklore, the Caelich is a shapeshifter with control over the weather and the land. She is closely associated with the harsh winter months, embodying the cold and relentless forces of nature. Her influence over the weather is both a blessing and a curse. She can bring about fierce storms and freezing temperatures, shaping the environment in ways that can both challenge and sustain life. The Highland people believed that the Caelich's moods could change the course of the seasons, making her a powerful and unpredictable force. Her influence extends beyond the weather. The Caelich is also a guardian of ancient wisdom and secrets. She is often seen as a keeper of old traditions and knowledge, embodying the deep connection between the land and its people. Her presence in folklore symbolizes the deep respect for the natural world and the understanding that human life is closely tied to the rhythms of nature. The Caelich represents the wild and untamed aspects of the world, a reminder of the forces that shape and govern the land. Seasonal associations are central to the Caelich's story. She is most closely linked with winter, a season that she rules with a cold and unyielding hand. According to legend, the Caelich is said to live in the mountains, where she hurls snow and ice across the land. Her influence wanes as spring approaches, giving way to the warmer, more temperate weather. In some tales, she is said to turn to stone during the summer months, only to awaken again with the arrival of winter. The transition between the seasons is a time of great significance for the Caelich. During the winter, she is a formidable presence, controlling the harsh elements and ensuring that the land is shaped according to her will. As the seasons change, her power shifts, reflecting the cyclical nature of the world and the deep connection between the land and its guardian. Mythological stories about the Caelich often depict her in a variety of roles, each highlighting different aspects of her character. In some tales, she is a wise old woman who offers guidance and counsel, her words imbued with ancient wisdom. In others, she is a fearsome figure whose power and unpredictability are to be respected and feared. 
These stories reflect the complexity of her character and the respect that she commands in the folklore of the Highlands. The Kalich's role in Highland folklore underscores the deep connection between the people and the land. Her presence is a reminder of the power and mystery of nature and the belief that the forces of the world are closely tied to the cycles of life and the changing seasons. Her story is a testament to the enduring power of myth and the way that ancient figures continue to shape and influence the way we understand the world around us. In the shimmering haze of Arthurian legend, one name stands out with a blend of allure and mystery, Morgan Le Fay. Her story is woven into the very fabric of medieval literature, a figure whose magic and ambitions cast long shadows across the tales of King Arthur and his knights. Morgan Le Fay's journey from a powerful enchantress to a complex antagonist reveals a character both captivating and enigmatic. Morgan Le Fay first appears in medieval literature as a formidable sorceress, a woman of immense power and deep magic. In the earliest stories, she is often portrayed as a force of both healing and destruction, her abilities setting her apart from the other characters in Arthurian legends. She is closely linked with the mystical and the supernatural, her presence bringing both wonder and unease to those who encounter her. Morgan is sometimes depicted as a healer, using her magic to mend wounds and cure ailments. In other tales, her enchantments can lead to deception and manipulation, showing her capacity for both benevolence and malice. One of the most compelling aspects of Morgan Le Fay's character is her transformation over time. In the earliest medieval accounts, such as Geoffrey of Monmouth's Historia Regum Britanniae, Morgan is portrayed as a wise and benevolent figure. She is Arthur's half-sister, possessing a deep knowledge of magic that she uses to help those around her. Her role is complex but generally positive, contributing to the rich tapestry of Arthurian legend with her skills and insights. As the stories evolve, Morgan Le Fay's character begins to shift. By the time of Sir Thomas Mallory's Le Mort d'Arthur, she has become a more malevolent figure, embodying many of the traits associated with the archetypal villain. In Mallory's work, Morgan Le Fay is portrayed as a schemer and a rival to Queen Guinevere. Her motivations are driven by jealousy and a desire for power, and her actions often place her in direct conflict with King Arthur and his knights. This darker portrayal emphasizes her role as a central antagonist in the Arthurian cycle, contrasting sharply with her earlier depictions. The evolution of Morgan Le Fay's character reflects broader themes in medieval literature. Her transformation from a helpful enchantress to a scheming adversary highlights the ways in which characters can be reinterpreted to fit different narratives and moral lessons. As the tales of Arthurian legend grew more elaborate, Morgan's character was adapted to serve new storylines and themes. Her shift from ally to foe serves to heighten the drama and conflict within the legend, adding depth and complexity to the tales of Arthur and his court. Despite her darker portrayals, Morgan Le Fay remains a figure of deep fascination. Her mastery of magic and her strong will make her a compelling character, one who embodies the power and unpredictability of the supernatural. Her role in the Arthurian legends is not just that of a villain, but also a symbol of the intricate interplay between magic and fate, power and ambition. The legacy of Morgan Le Fay extends beyond medieval literature into modern interpretations. Her character has been reimagined in countless ways, from literature and films to television series and beyond. These modern adaptations often explore different facets of her personality, reflecting contemporary themes and concerns. The enduring interest in Morgan Le Fay underscores her significance as a symbol of powerful, multifaceted female characters in literature and myth. Morgan Le Fay's story is a powerful testament to the enduring allure of Arthurian legend. Her journey from a revered sorceress to a complex antagonist reveals the depth and richness of medieval storytelling. Her character, with its blend of magic, ambition, and intrigue, continues to captivate and inspire, a reminder of the timeless fascination with the mystical and the enigmatic. In the tapestry of Hindu mythology, one figure stands out with a presence both awe-inspiring and formidable, Kali. With her fierce gaze and dynamic energy, she represents the ever-changing flow of time and the transformative power of change. Kali's role in mythology is both profound and multifaceted, revealing a goddess who embodies both creation and destruction in a way that is deeply moving. 
Kelly is often depicted with a powerful and striking appearance. She is usually shown with dark skin, symbolizing the vastness of space and the depth of the unknown. Her multiple arms, each holding a different weapon, signify her ability to take on various forms and functions. Her wide open eyes and protruding tongue convey her fierce, unyielding nature. This imagery might be startling at first, but it serves to represent her role as a force of profound change and transformation. In Hindu mythology, Kali is a manifestation of Shakti, the divine feminine energy that drives the universe. She is often associated with the goddess Durga, and together, they embody the dynamic and creative forces of the cosmos. Kali's presence is not just a force of destruction, but also of renewal. Her role as the goddess of time and change means she governs the cycles of life, death, and rebirth. She represents the inevitable destruction that comes before new growth, symbolizing the eternal rhythm of existence. One of the most powerful stories involving Kali is her battle with the demon Raktabija. In this tale, Kali is summoned to defeat a demon who could replicate himself from every drop of his blood. As Raktabija's blood fell to the ground, new demons sprang up, creating an unending cycle of violence. To overcome this, Kali manifested her many arms and began to drink the demon's blood before it could touch the earth. With each drop consumed, she stopped the multiplication of the demons and eventually defeated Raktabija. This story highlights Kali's role as a protective force, one who ends cycles of evil and restores balance. Kali's worship practices reflect her profound and transformative nature. Devotees approach her with reverence, acknowledging the dual aspects of her power. Rituals often involve offerings of red hibiscus flowers, which symbolize her power and fertility. Animal sacrifices, though less common today, have historically been part of her worship, reflecting the ancient belief in giving something of value to appease and honor the goddess. In modern practices, symbolic offerings and personal prayers are more common, focusing on the themes of letting go of old patterns and embracing change. The worship of Kali often takes place in temples dedicated to her, where devotees gather to perform ceremonies that celebrate her power and grace. During festivals like Kali Puja, people come together to honor her with elaborate rituals, music, and dance. These celebrations are filled with a sense of profound respect and devotion, acknowledging Kali's role in both the creation and dissolution of life. The emotional impact of Kali's worship lies in her ability to connect deeply with human experience. Her fierce demeanor and transformative power resonate with those who seek to overcome challenges and embrace new beginnings. She represents the courage to face change head-on and the strength to transform one's life. Her worship is not just about ritual practices, but also about personal transformation and spiritual growth. Kali's presence in Hindu mythology and worship is a testament to the profound and often intense nature of divine power. She embodies the forces of change that shape the world and the personal transformations that people undergo. Her role as the goddess of time and change reveals a deep understanding of the cycles of existence, highlighting the beauty and power of both creation and destruction. In the ancient world of Babylon, where the rivers of the Tigris and Euphrates carved their paths through the land, there emerged a figure of immense power and fear, Tiamat, the Babylonian chaos monster. Her story is not just one of terror, but also of creation and transformation, echoing through the myths and religious beliefs of ancient Mesopotamia. Tiamat is depicted as a vast and fearsome sea dragon or serpent, embodying the chaotic forces of the primordial ocean. Her very existence represents the untamed and raw power of the natural world before the onset of order. In the Babylonian creation myth, Tiamat's role is crucial, symbolizing the chaotic waters from which the universe itself emerges. She is the embodiment of the deep, the unformed, the tumultuous expanse that existed before the gods imposed structure upon the cosmos. The story of Tiamat's role in creation is both dramatic and profound. According to the Enuma Elish, the Babylonian creation epic, Tiamat initially coexists with Apsu, the god of freshwater, in a state of primordial chaos. Their union represents the original blend of chaotic forces that precede the order of the universe. 
However, as their children, the gods of the new generation, begin to stir and become restless, Tiamat and Apsu's once harmonious existence turns into discord. The young gods, seeking to establish their own dominion, provoke Apsu's anger, leading him to plot against them. In response, the gods strike first, killing Apsu and sealing him away. Tiamat, enraged by the death of her partner and the upheaval caused by the younger gods, transforms into a monstrous being of chaos and fury. She creates a host of fearsome creatures to wage war against the younger gods, embodying the chaos that threatens to engulf the cosmos. The battle between Tiamat and the gods reaches its climax when Marduk, the chief deity of Babylon, steps forward to confront her. Marduk, wielding immense power and strength, engages Tiamat in a fierce struggle. The confrontation is not just a physical battle, but a symbolic clash between order and chaos. Marduk's triumph over Tiamat signifies the victory of structure and harmony over the primal forces of disorder. After her defeat, Tiamat's body is used by Marduk to create the world. Her divided body forms the heavens and the earth, marking a transformation from chaos into cosmos. This act of creation underscores the notion that even the most destructive forces can be reshaped into something ordered and meaningful. Tiamat's legacy, then, is woven into the fabric of existence itself, her chaotic essence transformed into the structured world. Tiamat's influence on Mesopotamian religion is profound. She represents the untamed forces of nature and the potential for both creation and destruction inherent in chaos. Her story highlights the ancient Mesopotamian belief in the constant struggle between order and disorder, a theme that pervades their myths and religious practices. In the religious context of ancient Babylon, Tiamat's myth underscores the importance of divine order and the role of the gods in maintaining cosmic stability. Her defeat and the subsequent creation of the world by Marduk illustrate the concept that the divine has the power to impose order on the chaos that exists in the natural world. This narrative would resonate deeply with the people of Babylon, reinforcing their understanding of the cosmos as a place governed by divine will and structured by the gods. The memory of Tiamat also carried symbolic weight beyond just the creation myth. She represented the primal chaos that could disrupt the cosmic order if left unchecked. Her story served as a reminder of the fragile balance between creation and destruction, and the constant need for vigilance against the forces that might threaten to unravel the universe. Tiamat's role in Babylonian mythology, therefore, is a powerful testament to the ancient understanding of the world's origins and the divine forces that shape it. Her presence as a chaos monster and her subsequent transformation into a foundational element of creation reflect a deep and enduring vision of how the cosmos is born from and continually shaped by the interplay of opposing forces. In the quiet echoes of ancient texts and the whispers of forgotten legends, one name stirs a blend of mystery and fascination, Lilith. Her story is not just one of myth, but a powerful symbol whose origins and transformations weave through the tapestry of Jewish folklore and mysticism. Lilith's origins are rooted in the ancient Near Eastern traditions, where she is first mentioned in the Babylonian Talmud as a dark and enigmatic figure. Early references paint her as a demon, a spirit of the night who prowls in the shadows. She is depicted with a fearsome, almost otherworldly presence. Her role as a night demon is often associated with seduction and danger. Lilith's image as a dark, alluring figure sets the stage for her evolution into one of the most complex characters in Jewish mythology. The most enduring and poignant part of Lilith's story emerges from the earliest texts of Jewish mysticism and folklore. According to one tradition, Lilith was the first wife of Adam, created from the same soil and at the same time as him. This account depicts her as a powerful and independent woman who defied the traditional roles expected of her. Unlike Eve, who was later created from Adam's rib, Lilith refused to be subservient. Her desire for equality led to her being cast out of the Garden of Eden, symbolizing a rejection of the limitations imposed on her. Exiled from Eden, Lilith is said to have wandered the world, her figure becoming synonymous with the untamed forces of nature and the unknown. Her story is a haunting reminder of the consequences of challenging established norms and the price of independence in a world that often demanded conformity. 
Lilith's departure from Eden marks a dramatic moment of transformation, her image shifting from a rejected partner to a powerful, sometimes malevolent being. In later Jewish mysticism, particularly in the Kabbalistic tradition, Lilith's role evolves further. She is portrayed as a figure of chaos and destruction, a symbol of the shadowy, disruptive forces that lurk at the edges of human experience. In these mystical texts, Lilith is often depicted as a queen of demons, commanding legions of spirits and embodying the dangers that lurk in the dark. Her association with the night and with demonic forces reflects a deeper exploration of the balance between light and darkness, good and evil. Lilith's story is not just one of darkness and fear, however. In some later interpretations and feminist readings, she has come to symbolize empowerment and resistance. Her defiance against Adam and the established order resonates with themes of personal autonomy and self-determination. Lilith's narrative can be seen as a reflection of the struggles faced by those who seek to break free from oppressive norms and assert their own identity. Throughout folklore, Lilith's representations vary widely. In medieval texts, she is often portrayed as a seductive temptress who preys on men and newborns, her image steeped in fear and cautionary tales. This darker portrayal underscores the anxieties surrounding female power and sexuality, reflecting broader societal concerns about women who defy traditional roles. In contrast, modern interpretations of Lilith often focus on her as a figure of strength and independence. She is seen as a symbol of resistance against subjugation and a champion of personal freedom. This shift in perspective highlights the evolving nature of her character and the way her story has been reinterpreted to reflect contemporary values and concerns. Lilith's legacy is a testament to the power of myth and its ability to adapt and resonate through the ages. Her story, with its themes of defiance, exile, and transformation, continues to captivate and provoke thought. As a figure who bridges the ancient and the modern, the dark and the empowering, Lilith's presence in mythology remains a powerful symbol of the complexity of human experience and the enduring struggle for autonomy and recognition. In the heart of French folklore, where the shadows of ancient forests whisper tales of magic and mystery, one figure stands out with a blend of power and enchantment, Nanette, the witch whose legend has captivated the imagination of many. Her story, filled with wonder and intrigue, reveals a character who embodies the mystical and often unpredictable forces of magic. Nanette is more than just a witch, she is a powerful sorceress whose abilities are as diverse as they are remarkable. In the legends that have traveled through the ages, Nanette is depicted as a woman of extraordinary magical prowess. She possesses the ability to control the elements, bend the natural world to her will, and cast spells that can alter the very course of events. Her powers are not just about manipulation, but also about transformation, reflecting a deep connection to the forces of nature and the unseen world. One of the most enchanting aspects of Nanette's legends is her connection to the natural world. Stories often portray her as living in harmony with the forest, her home hidden among ancient trees and wild landscapes. This close bond with nature allows her to wield magic that influences the growth of plants, the flow of rivers, and the behavior of animals. In some tales, she is said to communicate with animals, understanding their thoughts and emotions, which she uses to help those in need or to punish those who wrong others. Ninette's magical abilities are not merely for spectacle, they serve a deeper purpose in her stories. She is often depicted as a guardian of balance, using her powers to protect the natural world from those who seek to exploit or harm it. Her interventions in the lives of people are seen as both a blessing and a warning. When she helps, it is with a sense of justice and fairness, often rewarding the kind-hearted and punishing the wicked. This dual nature of her magic, both nurturing and avenging, reflects the complexities of the natural world and the moral lessons embedded in the folklore. Her impact on French mythology is significant, weaving her into the very fabric of the tales that have shaped cultural beliefs and practices. Nanette represents a bridge between the human and the magical, embodying the ancient belief in the powerful and unpredictable forces that govern both nature and human fate. Her stories contribute to a broader tradition of witchcraft and magic in French folklore, where witches are often depicted as beings with the power to influence the world in profound ways. The tales of Nanette are rich with themes of transformation and redemption. 
In many legends, her magic is used to teach lessons about respect, humility, and the interconnectedness of all living things. Those who encounter her often face trials that test their character, with Nanette's interventions revealing deeper truths about themselves and their actions. Her presence in these stories serves as a reminder of the moral and ethical dimensions of magic, highlighting the responsibility that comes with great power. Nanette's legacy is also reflected in the way her story has inspired and influenced later interpretations of witches and magic in French culture. Her character has become a symbol of the enduring fascination with the supernatural and the mystical, embodying the qualities of strength, wisdom, and mystery that continue to captivate audiences. Her tales have been retold and reimagined, each new version adding layers to her already rich mythology and ensuring that her legend endures through the ages. In French folklore, Nanette stands as a powerful and evocative figure, her story a testament to the enduring allure of magic and the complexities of the natural world. Her legends, filled with wonder and moral depth, reflect the timeless fascination with the supernatural and the profound impact that such stories can have on cultural beliefs and practices. Through her magical abilities and the lessons embedded in her tales, Nanette remains a figure of intrigue and inspiration, bridging the gap between the mystical and the real. In the shadows of Norse mythology, where the ancient gods and goddesses weave their fates, there lies a figure whose presence commands both awe and fear, Hel, the goddess of the underworld. Her story, steeped in the mysteries of death and the afterlife, reveals a powerful and haunting figure whose domain is as enigmatic as it is significant. Hel is the ruler of Helheim, the Norse underworld, a place where souls who did not die a heroic or honorable death find their resting place. Unlike the bright halls of Valhalla or the blessed fields of Folkvanger, Helheim is a realm of darkness and cold, reflecting the nature of the goddess who presides over it. This world is neither a place of punishment nor reward, but a quiet, shadowy abode where the spirits of the deceased await their fate. Hel herself is a striking figure, described as having a face half alive and half dead. One side of her is as pale and lifeless as the dead, while the other retains a semblance of normalcy. This eerie appearance captures the essence of her domain, an intersection between life and death, where the living and the departed converge. Her dual nature serves as a reminder of the inescapable reality of mortality and the boundary between the worlds of the living and the dead. As the goddess of the underworld, Hell possesses powers that reflect her dominion over the realm of death. She has the ability to control the souls of the departed, guiding them to their final resting place and overseeing their existence in the afterlife. Her power is not just about ruling over the dead, but also about maintaining the balance between life and death. She ensures that the souls under her care are kept in the quiet and cold of Helheim, a place where they await whatever fate the gods have decreed for them. Hell's associations with death and the afterlife are deeply embedded in Norse beliefs. In the Norse worldview, death was not seen as an end, but as a transition to a different form of existence. The underworld, as ruled by Hell, is a significant part of this transition, representing a place of rest and waiting. Souls who end up in Helheim are those who did not achieve greatness in life or die in battle, which means their afterlife is one of quiet obscurity rather than heroic honor. In many stories, Hell is depicted as a figure of inevitability and finality. Her presence is both a reminder of the natural cycle of life and death and a symbol of the mysteries that lie beyond human understanding. Her role in Norse mythology is not merely to preside over the dead, but to embody the natural order of life's end and the continuation of existence in another form. She represents the final, unalterable reality that all beings must face, a force that stands beyond the control of even the mightiest gods. Hell's influence extends beyond just the realm of the dead. Her domain intersects with the lives of the gods and heroes, touching upon the themes of fate and destiny. In some tales, her interactions with other gods reflect the delicate balance between life and death, illustrating how even the divine are subject to the inevitabilities of existence. Her presence serves as a poignant reminder of the unchanging truths of mortality and the ultimate fate that awaits everyone. The stories of Hell are both chilling and profound, revealing the deep and sometimes unsettling nature of the Norse understanding of death and the afterlife. Her realm is not one of fiery torment or blissful paradise, but of quiet waiting and reflection. 
Her role is to ensure that the natural order is maintained, and her appearance and domain reflect the solemn and inevitable truth of death. Hell, with her eerie appearance and her realm of quiet cold, embodies the timeless truths of mortality. She stands as a powerful symbol of the end that awaits everyone, a reminder of the inescapable reality of death and the transition to the afterlife. Her presence in Norse mythology serves as a haunting but essential part of the cosmic order, a figure whose domain is both a place of rest and a reminder of the eternal cycle of existence. In the dark corners of Greek mythology, where gods and monsters battle for supremacy, one figure stands out as the progenitor of some of the most fearsome creatures ever imagined, Echidna, the mother of monsters. Her story is one of primal power and terrifying legacy, shaping the mythological landscape with her fearsome offspring and indelible impact on ancient tales. Echidna's mythological role is both haunting and powerful. Described as a half-woman, half-snake creature, she embodies a fusion of humanity and the serpentine, representing a deep-seated fear of the monstrous and the unknown. Her very form, a beautiful woman from the waist up and a serpent from the waist down, captures the dual nature of allure and dread that she represents. She is often depicted as a being of both beauty and terror, her serpentine lower body a symbol of the chaotic and destructive forces that she commands. Echidna's most significant role in mythology is as the mother of an array of monstrous offspring. Her union with Typhon, the father of all monsters, results in a progeny that includes some of the most iconic and fearsome beings of Greek myth. Among her children are the Chimera, a fearsome beast with the heads of a lion, a goat, and a snake, the Linnean Hydra, a serpent-like creature with multiple heads that regenerate if severed, and Cerberus, the three-headed dog who guards the underworld. Each of these monsters embodies a different facet of fear and chaos, reflecting Echidna's own nature and the legacy of terror she passes on to her children. Echidna's influence in Greek mythology is profound and far-reaching. Her role as the mother of monsters makes her a central figure in many myths, representing the monstrous and chaotic forces that the gods must confront and overcome. The monsters she births are not merely creatures of destruction, but are imbued with symbolic significance. They often represent the boundaries of the known world and the challenges that heroes must face to achieve greatness. In many myths, the heroes of Greece, such as Heracles and Perseus, must battle Echidna's children as part of their heroic quests. These battles are not just physical confrontations, but symbolic struggles against the forces of chaos and disorder. By overcoming these monsters, the heroes assert their dominance over the chaotic elements of the world and affirm the order and stability brought by the gods. Echidna's presence in these stories is a reminder of the ever-present threat of chaos that lurks at the edges of human understanding. Her role as the progenitor of monsters underscores the idea that the struggle against chaos and evil is a central theme in the human experience. The monsters she gives birth to challenge the heroes, testing their strength courage, and ingenuity. In this way, Echidna's influence extends beyond just her own story, shaping the narratives and themes that define Greek mythology. Her legacy is a testament to the power of myth to embody and explore the deepest fears and aspirations of humanity. Echidna, with her monstrous progeny and her role in the mythological world, represents the eternal struggle between order and chaos, good and evil. Her story, though often overshadowed by the deeds of the gods and heroes, is a crucial part of the mythological landscape, reflecting the enduring fascination with the monstrous and the unknown. Echidna stands as a figure of dark power and primal fear, her role in Greek mythology a vivid reminder of the monstrous forces that challenge the gods and heroes. Her children, each a symbol of terror and chaos, underscore her impact on the mythological world, shaping the stories and themes that continue to captivate and intrigue. Through her legacy, Echidna remains a powerful and enduring symbol of the monstrous and the mysterious, her story a chilling and compelling part of the mythological tapestry. In the heart of ancient myth, where mortal struggles intertwine with divine fate, one story stands out with its poignant blend of love, trials, and transformation, the tale of Psyche. Her journey from mortal to goddess is not just a story of personal growth, but a timeless reflection on the power of love and the magic that binds human and divine realms. Psyche's transformation is nothing short of magical. 
Born immortal with unparalleled beauty, she captures the admiration of all who see her. Her beauty is so profound that it draws the ire of Venus, the goddess of love, who becomes envious and orders her son, Cupid, to make Psyche fall in love with the most unsuitable of men. But instead of ensuring Psyche's unhappiness, Cupid himself falls deeply in love with her. Their love story, though hidden and fraught with trials, becomes the core of Psyche's journey. The trials Psyche endures are both grueling and illuminating. She is forced to undertake seemingly impossible tasks set by Venus, each one more challenging than the last. These trials are not just physical tests, but deeply symbolic of her inner strength and resolve. They include tasks such as sorting a massive pile of mixed grains, fetching gold and wool from fierce sheep, and retrieving a drop of water from the underworld. Each challenge represents a step in her transformation, a test of her resilience and commitment to her love for Cupid. The most touching part of Psyche's story is her ultimate transformation from mortal to divine. After overcoming these daunting trials, Psyche is granted immortality by Jupiter, the king of the gods. This divine elevation is not just a reward, but a profound acknowledgement of her unwavering love and her ability to face the darkest challenges with courage. Her ascension to the heavens symbolizes the ultimate union of the human and divine, a testament to the power of love to transcend even the greatest of obstacles. Psyche's story is deeply embedded in romantic and magical themes. Her love for Cupid, though tested and hidden, represents the purity and depth of true love. Despite the trials and separation, Psyche's love remains steadfast, guiding her through each challenge. Her journey from mortal to divine also embodies the theme of transformation, illustrating how love and perseverance can lead to extraordinary change. The magical elements of Psyche's story are as significant as its romantic themes. The tasks set by Venus are not just obstacles, but enchanted challenges that test Psyche's resourcefulness and character. The involvement of gods and mystical elements throughout her journey underscores the magical quality of her love and transformation. Psyche's eventual deification reflects the belief that true love has the power to bridge the gap between the mortal and the divine, elevating her to a realm where she can live eternally with Cupid. Her tale resonates through time because it captures the essence of human longing and divine intervention. It is a story of trials and triumphs, of love that defies the odds and transforms both the lover and the beloved. Psyche's journey from a beautiful mortal to a revered goddess is a testament to the enduring power of love and the magic that it can inspire, a story that continues to touch hearts and captivate imaginations across generations. In the ancient stories of Norse mythology, where gods and goddesses shape the world's destiny, one figure stands as a symbol of life's nurturing force, Sif, the goddess of the harvest. Her story weaves together themes of fertility, abundance, and the vital connection between the land and its people, revealing a figure who embodies the life-giving essence of the earth itself. Sif's connection to fertility and abundance is both profound and essential. She is often depicted as a goddess associated with the harvest, a time of reaping the rewards of the earth's bounty. This association with the harvest underscores her role in ensuring that the land remains fertile and productive, vital for sustaining life and community. Her presence in the mythology highlights the ancient understanding of the cycles of growth and the importance of nature's rhythms in human life. In many myths, Sif is closely linked with grain and crops. Her golden hair is famously said to represent fields of wheat or barley, shimmering with the richness of the harvest. This imagery reflects the crucial role she plays in ensuring that the earth yields its bounty. The golden locks symbolize the abundance that comes from a successful harvest, a source of sustenance and prosperity for the people. In this way, Sif's divine essence is interwoven with the fertility of the land, representing the fruits of labor and the promise of future growth. Sif's role in Norse mythology extends beyond mere symbolism. She is depicted as the wife of Thor, the thunder god, and their union represents the vital connection between the nurturing power of the earth and the strength of the gods. Together, they embody the balance between the fertile land and the forces that protect and sustain it. This partnership reflects the interconnectedness of life and the importance of both divine and natural forces in maintaining harmony and prosperity. The representation of Sif in Norse mythology also underscores the reverence for nature and its cycles. 
the changing seasons, the planting and harvesting of crops, and the rhythms of the earth are central to her story. She is a reminder of the deep relationship between humans and the land they depend on. Her presence in the myths serves as a tribute to the natural world's power to provide and sustain life, a reflection of the ancient people's respect for the forces that govern their existence. Sif's story is a heartwarming testament to the life-giving and nurturing aspects of nature. Her connection to the harvest and fertility highlights the importance of the Earth's cycles and the gratitude that ancient peoples felt for the bounty they received. Through her, the myths capture the essence of nature's abundance and the divine care that ensures its continuance. Her tale is a celebration of life's cyclical nature, the prosperity that comes from the land, and the reverence for the forces that sustain and nurture all living things. In the shadows of ancient Roman beliefs, where divine retribution and justice take shape, the Furii stand out as powerful symbols of vengeance. These fierce goddesses, known for their unrelenting pursuit of wrongdoers, embody the raw and intense force of punishment, reflecting the deep-seated need for balance and justice in Roman culture. The Furii, also known as the Furies, are often depicted as three distinct but interconnected deities, Alecto, Magira, and Tisiphone. Each one represents a different aspect of vengeance, coming together to form a collective force of divine retribution. Their very names evoke the depth of their purpose, Electo, the unceasing, Magira, the jealous, and Tisiphone, the avenger of murder. Together, they personify the consuming nature of rage and the relentless drive for justice. These goddesses are characterized by their terrifying presence. They are usually portrayed with snakes entwined in their hair, their eyes aflame with a fiery glow, and their bodies adorned with dark, fearsome attire. Their appearance alone instills a sense of dread and awe, underscoring their role as agents of punishment. They are not just figures of vengeance, but embodiments of the consequences that follow wrongdoing, representing the darker side of divine justice. In Roman culture, the Furii played a crucial role in maintaining societal order. They were invoked in matters of grave injustice and betrayal, especially when the wrongs committed could not be rectified by ordinary means. Their presence was a reminder of the divine laws that governed human behavior, ensuring that those who committed heinous acts would face inevitable consequences. This belief in their power reflected the deep Roman value placed on justice and the importance of retribution for maintaining social harmony. The Furii's influence extended beyond mythology and into the realm of legal and moral principles. Their role as goddesses of vengeance emphasized the importance of accountability and the idea that wrongdoing would always be met with divine punishment. This belief reinforced the societal expectation that individuals must uphold moral standards, knowing that their actions would be judged not just by human authorities, but also by the divine. Their impact on Roman culture can be seen in various aspects of daily life and governance. The fear of divine retribution ensured that people adhered to societal norms and laws, aware that the Furii could strike at any time if those norms were violated. This pervasive sense of divine oversight fostered a culture of vigilance and integrity, where justice was not just a matter of human concern, but a divine imperative. The Furii's role in Roman culture also highlights the complex relationship between fear and morality. While they were feared for their harsh methods, their presence also served as a moral guide, reminding people of the consequences of their actions and encouraging adherence to ethical principles. This duality of terror and guidance underscores the ancient belief in the necessity of both justice and mercy in maintaining societal order. Their story resonates deeply, reflecting the timeless human concern for justice and the need for accountability. The Furii are more than just figures of vengeance, they are powerful symbols of the balance between right and wrong, a reminder of the divine forces that ensure justice is served. Their legacy continues to evoke a sense of awe and respect, reminding us of the ancient belief in the profound connection between human actions and divine retribution. In the vast and mysterious tapestry of ancient Egyptian mythology, the Sphinx stands as a majestic and enigmatic figure. With the body of a lion and the head of a human, this mythical creature commands both awe and reverence. Her presence evokes a sense of grandeur and mystery, embodying the ancient Egyptians' fascination with riddles and the profound questions of life and the afterlife. 
the Sphinx's role in Egyptian mythology is deeply intertwined with the concept of mystery. She is famously known for guarding sacred places and offering riddles to those who seek to pass. The most famous Sphinx, the Great Sphinx of Giza, watches over the pyramids with an air of timelessness and authority. Her riddle, though lost to the ages, was a test of wisdom and insight, reflecting the ancient belief that true understanding requires both intellect and intuition. The riddles of the Sphinx are not just puzzles, but gateways to deeper truths. They challenge the seeker to think beyond the obvious and confront profound existential questions. The Sphinx's ability to pose these riddles and her role in guarding sacred sites highlight the importance of wisdom and knowledge in ancient Egyptian culture. To solve her riddles was to gain access to greater understanding, a concept that resonates deeply with the human quest for meaning and enlightenment. Culturally, the Sphinx holds a place of great significance. She is not merely a guardian of secrets, but a symbol of the divine and the eternal. Her form, combining the regal strength of a lion with the thoughtful visage of a human, represents the harmony of power and intellect. This combination underscores the ancient Egyptians' reverence for the balance between physical strength and mental acuity, a balance that was essential for both rulers and priests. In religious contexts, the Sphinx's presence is linked to the gods and the divine order. She is often associated with the sun god R.A. and the goddesses of wisdom and protection. Her role as a guardian of sacred spaces aligns her with the divine protection of temples and tombs, places where the earthly and the divine worlds intersect. The Sphinx's gaze, fixed eternally over the pyramids, symbolizes the eternal watchfulness of the gods over the realm of the living and the dead. The Great Sphinx of Giza, in particular, embodies the grandeur of ancient Egyptian civilization. Carved from a single block of limestone, it stands as a testament to the skill and dedication of the ancient builders. The sheer scale and enduring presence of the Sphinx evoke a sense of timelessness, reminding us of the ancient Egyptians' aspirations to create something that would outlast their mortal lives and connect them with the divine. The cultural impact of the Sphinx extends beyond the borders of ancient Egypt. Throughout history, her image and the mysteries surrounding her have inspired countless stories, myths, and artistic representations. She has become a universal symbol of enigma and wisdom, representing the enduring human fascination with the unknown and the quest for knowledge. The Sphinx's story is a poignant reminder of the ancient Egyptians' profound respect for wisdom and their belief in the power of riddles to reveal deeper truths. Her role as a guardian of secrets and her symbolic connection to the divine reflect the timeless human quest for understanding and the desire to unlock the mysteries of existence. Her enduring presence continues to captivate imaginations and inspire a sense of wonder, connecting us to the ancient past and the eternal quest for knowledge. In the dark corners of ancient Greek mythology, where fear and the supernatural intertwine, the Lamias emerge as terrifying figures of dread and despair. Originating from a tale that begins with a tragic figure turned monster, the Lamias are demons whose legend strikes fear into the hearts of those who hear their stories. Their chilling presence is a reminder of the ancient Greeks' deep-seated fears and their attempts to understand the darker side of the human experience. The legend of Lamia begins with a tragic and sorrowful figure. Originally, Lamia was a beautiful woman loved by the god Zeus. However, her happiness was shattered when Hera, Zeus's wife, discovered the affair and punished Lamia by taking away her children. Overcome with grief and anger, Lamia was transformed into a monstrous being. Her transformation was not just physical but also emotional, as she became a creature of revenge and horror, driven by a relentless desire to seek vengeance for her lost children. In her demonic form, Lamia is depicted as a creature with a ghastly appearance, often described with the upper body of a woman and the lower body of a serpent or other monstrous features. This horrifying transformation reflects her deep anguish and rage, making her a symbol of the devastating effects of loss and betrayal. The monstrous aspect of Lamia serves as a visual representation of the emotional turmoil she endures, turning her suffering into something tangible and terrifying. The Lamias are famously known for their connection to the terrifying legends of child eating. These demons were said to haunt the night, preying on children and devouring them. This gruesome aspect of their legends served as a dark and fearsome warning to parents. 
The story of the Lamias was used to keep children in line, warning them of the dangers that lurked in the shadows and reinforcing the importance of obedience and caution. The fearsome tales of Lamia also have deeper cultural significance. They reflect the ancient Greeks' attempts to understand and explain the darker aspects of their world. The story of Lamia captures the raw, unsettling emotions associated with loss, revenge, and the unknown. It shows how mythologies often arise from profound personal and collective fears, transforming them into powerful symbols that continue to resonate through the ages. In ancient Greek culture, the Lamias were not just tales told to frighten children, but also symbols of broader themes of vengeance and the consequences of anger. They represent the monstrous outcomes of unresolved grief and rage, serving as a powerful reminder of how unchecked emotions can lead to devastating consequences. The legends of Lamia also highlight the ancient Greeks' belief in the supernatural as a way to explain and cope with their fears and anxieties. The Lamia story is a heart-wrenching example of how personal tragedy can transform into something monstrous and terrifying. The figure of Lamia embodies the profound sorrow and rage that can arise from losing loved ones, turning into a fearsome demon driven by a thirst for vengeance. The tales of Lamia, with their chilling details and dark themes, serve as a haunting reminder of the ancient Greeks' deep fears and their ways of grappling with the darker aspects of human experience. In the enchanting landscape of Welsh mythology, where magic and nature dance together, the figure of Rhiannon emerges with grace and mystery. Her story, wrapped in beauty and sorrow, captivates the heart and stirs the imagination. Rhiannon, the Welsh horse goddess, holds a significant place in the mythological and cultural tapestry of Wales, embodying themes of resilience, transformation, and the mystical bond between humans and the natural world. Rhiannon's tale begins with a sense of wonder and enchantment. She is often depicted riding a majestic white horse, her flowing hair and serene presence captivating all who behold her. Her arrival in the mythological world is marked by a love story with Poole, the Prince of Dyfed. Their union is not just a romantic tale, but a profound intertwining of human and divine, a connection that brings together different realms and symbolizes the harmony between them. Rhiannon's mythological attributes are deeply rooted in her association with horses, animals that symbolize strength, freedom, and nobility. Her ability to move effortlessly between the human and supernatural worlds underscores her role as a mediator and protector. Rhiannon's horse, a creature of unparalleled beauty and speed, reflects her own qualities of grace and power. This connection to horses also emphasizes her role as a guide and guardian, leading those who follow her towards wisdom and understanding. Her story takes a poignant turn when she is falsely accused of a crime she did not commit. Accused of murdering her own son, Rhiannon faces severe punishment and is forced to endure great hardship. Her resilience in the face of such injustice is a testament to her inner strength and dignity. Rhiannon's ability to withstand suffering and remain steadfast embodies the timeless theme of endurance and the belief that truth and justice will ultimately prevail. The symbolism of Rhiannon extends beyond her personal story, touching upon broader themes within Welsh culture. She represents the cyclical nature of life, death, and rebirth, mirroring the natural rhythms of the earth. Her connection to horses and the natural world reflects the deep respect and reverence that the Welsh people have for their land and its creatures. Rhiannon's story is not just a myth, but a reflection of the values and beliefs that underpin Welsh cultural identity. In Welsh culture, Rhiannon is also seen as a symbol of sovereignty and the rightful order of things. Her marriage to Poole and her trials represent the challenges and responsibilities of leadership and the need for balance and harmony in governance. Rhiannon's wisdom and fairness are qualities that resonate with the ideals of just and compassionate rule, making her an enduring figure of inspiration and guidance. Rhiannon's significance in Welsh mythology is further highlighted by her connection to the Otherworld, a mystical realm that exists parallel to the human world. This connection underscores her role as a bridge between the seen and unseen, the known and unknown. Rhiannon's presence in the Otherworld and her ability to traverse its boundaries emphasize the Welsh belief in the interconnectedness of all things and the existence of deeper, hidden truths that lie beyond the ordinary. Her story is one of transformation and redemption. 
Despite the false accusations and the suffering she endures, Rhiannon's innocence is eventually proven, and she is reunited with her son. This reunion is not just a personal victory, but a reaffirmation of the belief in justice, truth, and the power of love to heal and restore. Rhiannon's journey from despair to triumph reflects the enduring hope and resilience that define the human spirit. Rhiannon's mythological attributes and her significance in Welsh culture continue to resonate through the ages. Her story, with its themes of love, loss, endurance, and redemption, speaks to the universal experiences of humanity. Rhiannon's grace, strength, and wisdom make her a timeless figure of admiration and inspiration, a goddess whose presence continues to enchant and uplift. The tale of Rhiannon is a heart-touching narrative that draws us into the rich and mystical world of Welsh mythology. Her role as a horse goddess, her resilience in the face of injustice, and her profound connection to the natural world and the other world create a story that is both enchanting and deeply meaningful. Rhiannon's legacy endures, reminding us of the enduring power of love, truth, and the human spirit's capacity for transformation and renewal. In the pantheon of Greek gods, one figure stands out for his wild, intoxicating charm and the ecstatic freedom he embodies, Dionysus, the god of wine and ecstasy. Imagine the vibrant festivals, the laughter, the music, and the intoxicating allure of the night as Dionysus captures the hearts and minds of his followers. His story, steeped in frenzy and ritual madness, is a whirlwind of passion, liberation, and divine influence on magical practices. Dionysus's connection to frenzy and ritual madness is as profound as it is enchanting. Born from the union of Zeus and the mortal simile, Dionysus was destined to live a life that oscillated between divine and mortal realms. His birth itself was marked by chaos and wonder, as Simile perished upon witnessing Zeus's true form, leaving the unborn Dionysus to be sewn into Zeus's thigh until he was ready to be born again. This miraculous birth set the stage for a god whose very essence defied the ordinary and embraced the extraordinary. Dionysus's presence brought with it a sense of ecstatic liberation. He was the god who tore down the barriers of restraint and order, inviting his followers into a state of divine madness where they could transcend their mortal limitations. His festivals, known as Dionysia, were a time of frenzied celebration. People danced, sang, and indulged in the fruits of the vine, losing themselves in the ecstatic joy that Dionysus bestowed upon them. These rites were not mere revelries, but deeply spiritual experiences that allowed participants to connect with the divine and explore the hidden depths of their souls. The frenzied states induced by Dionysus were not without their darker aspects. His followers, known as menads, would often enter into states of wild, uncontrollable madness. In their ecstasy, they were said to possess superhuman strength, tearing apart animals and even people in a ritualistic frenzy. This duality of ecstasy and destruction reflects the complex nature of Dionysus himself, both a bringer of joy and a harbinger of chaos. His ability to inspire such intense emotions and actions speaks to his profound influence over the human psyche. Dionysus's influence extended beyond the realm of physical frenzy into the mystical practices of magic and transformation. He was a god of metamorphosis, capable of changing forms and inspiring transformations in others. His connection to wine, a substance that itself transforms from grape to intoxicating liquid, is symbolic of his power to alter perception and reality. Followers of Dionysus believed that through his rites, they could achieve a form of divine possession, allowing them to see beyond the mundane and experience the world through the eyes of the god himself. Magical practices associated with Dionysus often involved elements of intoxication and altered states of consciousness. Wine, as his sacred substance, played a central role in these rituals. Drinking wine was not just an act of consumption, but a sacramental experience that brought one closer to the divine. Oracles of Dionysus would enter trances, their prophecies flowing from the altered states induced by his presence. In these moments of ecstatic revelation, the boundaries between the human and the divine blurred, offering glimpses into the mysteries of the universe. The cult of Dionysus also influenced theatrical traditions in ancient Greece. 
the origins of Greek drama are closely tied to the Dionysian festivals, where theatrical performances evolved from ritualistic dances and songs dedicated to the god. Tragedies and comedies alike explored themes of transformation, identity, and the human condition, central aspects of Dionysus's domain. The theater became a space where the divine madness of Dionysus could be safely experienced and contemplated, allowing audiences to confront their deepest fears and desires through the art of storytelling. Dionysus's legacy is one of paradox and power. He embodies the joy of life and the inevitability of death, the ecstasy of freedom and the chaos of uncontrolled passion. His influence permeates through the realms of human experience, from the intoxicating pleasure of wine to the transformative power of art and theater. Dionysus invites us to embrace the wild, untamed aspects of our nature, to lose ourselves in moments of ecstatic joy, and to find magic in the most unexpected places. His story is a reminder that within each of us lies the capacity for both creation and destruction, order and chaos. Dionysus's frenzied rites and magical practices offer a path to understanding the complexities of the human soul, urging us to confront our shadows and celebrate our light. In the intoxicating embrace of Dionysus, we find a god who understands the depths of human emotion, a deity who invites us to dance on the edge of madness and discover the divine within ourselves. In the heart of the dense, ancient forests of Eastern Europe, where the trees whisper secrets and shadows dance with the flickering light, there lives a figure both feared and revered, Baba Yaga, the enigmatic Slavic witch. Her presence is as old as the woods themselves, a character woven into the very fabric of Eastern European folklore, a guardian of mystery and magic, whose stories have sent shivers down the spines of countless generations. Baba Yaga's home is no ordinary dwelling. It is a hut that stands on chicken legs, perpetually spinning and surrounded by a fence made of human bones. This eerie abode can move, rotate, and even fly, carrying Baba Yaga wherever her whims may take her. It is said that she rides through the skies in a mortar, steering with a pestle, and sweeping away her tracks with a broomstick made from silver birch. Her hut, like Baba Yaga herself, defies the ordinary, embodying the unsettling magic that surrounds her. Her appearance is as unsettling as her home. Baba Yaga is often described as an old, haggard woman with a long, hooked nose, iron teeth, and a skeletal frame. Her hair is wild and white, her eyes gleam with a knowing light, and her fingers are long and bony, tipped with sharp nails. Yet, despite her fearsome looks, there is an undeniable wisdom in her gaze, a depth of knowledge that only someone who has lived through countless ages could possess. The stories of Baba Yaga are as numerous and varied as the lands they come from. She is often depicted as a witch with ambiguous morals, sometimes helping those who seek her out, and other times hindering or harming them. In some tales, she is a villain, preying on the weak and the innocent. In others, she is a wise old crone, providing guidance and aid to those brave enough to approach her. One of the most well-known stories is that of Vasilisa the Beautiful, Vasilisa, a young girl blessed with extraordinary beauty and cursed with a wicked stepmother, is sent into the forest to seek out Baba Yaga. Her stepmother hopes that Baba Yaga will devour Vasilisa, ridding her of the girl she so despises. But Vasilisa, with the help of a magical doll given to her by her mother, completes the impossible tasks set by Baba Yaga. Impressed by her diligence and spirit, Baba Yaga spares Vasilisa and even helps her on her journey, ultimately leading to Vasilisa's triumph over her stepmother. In another tale, Baba Yaga is approached by a young man seeking to rescue his sister from captivity. The witch sets him a series of arduous tasks, each more challenging than the last. With determination and wit, the young man completes the tasks and earns Baba Yaga's grudging respect. She releases his sister and provides the siblings with guidance on their journey home, illustrating that Baba Yaga's assistance, though difficult to earn, can be invaluable. Baba Yaga's role in these stories is complex. She is a test, a trial that must be faced and overcome. Her demands are harsh, her demeanor is terrifying, but she offers wisdom and aid to those who prove themselves worthy. She embodies the duality of nature itself, nurturing and destructive, kind and cruel. 
Her character teaches us that life's greatest rewards often come from facing our deepest fears and that wisdom is often hidden in the most unexpected places. In Eastern European folklore, Baba Yaga serves as a guardian of the natural world and its secrets. She is the keeper of ancient wisdom, the embodiment of the wild, untamed forces of nature. Her character is a reminder of the thin line between civilization and the wild, a line that can be crossed at any moment, plunging us into the heart of the unknown. The tales of Baba Yaga have left a lasting impact on Eastern European culture. Her image is iconic, her stories have been told and retold, each generation adding their own nuances and interpretations. She has inspired countless works of literature, art, and film, each seeking to capture the essence of this mysterious, magical figure. Her influence extends beyond folklore, reaching into the realms of psychology and philosophy, where she is seen as a symbol of the archetypal witch, the wise old woman who dwells on the fringes of society, holding the keys to both creation and destruction. Baba Yaga's character is a testament to the power of storytelling and the enduring human fascination with the unknown. Her tales are filled with magic and mystery, but they also carry profound truths about the human condition, our fears, our hopes, and our endless quest for understanding. Baba Yaga invites us to look beyond the surface, to embrace the unknown, and to find courage in the face of fear. As the shadows lengthen and the night deepens, the stories of Baba Yaga continue to captivate, enchant, and terrify. Her figure looms large in the collective imagination, a symbol of the magic that lies just beyond the edge of the known world. Through her tales, we are reminded that the world is full of wonders and that sometimes, the most terrifying figures can offer the greatest insights. In the end, Baba Yaga is more than just a witch, she is a guide through the labyrinth of the human soul, a beacon in the dark forest of our fears and dreams. The sound of flowing water and the gentle rustle of leaves paint a serene picture, but within this tranquility lies the powerful essence of Kalkaedlaku, the revered Aztec goddess of water. Her name, meaning she of the jade skirt, speaks of her beauty and the life-giving force she embodies. Kalkaedlaku was not just a deity, she was a vital presence, her influence flowing through the rivers, lakes, and seas of the Aztec world. In the heart of the Aztec civilization, where towering temples pierced the sky and vibrant marketplaces buzzed with life, Kalkaedlaku held a sacred place. As the goddess of water, she was indispensable to agriculture, fertility, and life itself. Water, the lifeblood of the earth, was her domain. Without her blessings, the fields would wither, and life would struggle to survive. Her worship was as vast and deep as the waters she governed. Rituals dedicated to Kalkaedlaku were intricate and filled with devotion. Offerings of jade, precious stones, and even human sacrifices were made to honor her and seek her favor. In these rituals, the Aztecs would gather near bodies of water, singing hymns and chanting prayers their voices mingling with the sound of the water as they implored Kalkaedlaku for bountiful rains and protection from floods. The symbolism of Kalkaedlaku in Aztec mythology is rich and profound. She is often depicted with flowing garments that resemble water, her jade skirt shimmering like the rippling surface of a lake. In some images, she holds a pair of infant children, symbolizing her role as a nurturer and protector. Her presence is a reminder of the dual nature of water, it can nourish and sustain, but it can also overwhelm and destroy. One of the most compelling aspects of Kalkaedlaku's mythology is her association with birth and fertility. Water is the source of all life, and so it was with Kalkaedlaku. She was believed to preside over childbirth, guiding the process and ensuring the safety of both mother and child. In this role, she was deeply intertwined with the cycles of life and death, embodying the perpetual flow of existence. Kalkaedlaku's influence extended beyond the physical realm, she was also a guardian of moral conduct. The Aztecs believed that her wrath could be invoked by dishonesty or cruelty, leading to natural disasters such as floods. This belief reinforced the values of truth and kindness, with Kalkaedlaku serving as both protector and enforcer of ethical behavior. The stories of Kalkaedlaku are filled with emotion and drama, reflecting the deep respect and fear the Aztecs had for the natural world. One such story tells of the great flood she unleashed to cleanse the earth. 
Angered by human wickedness, Kalkayatlikyu let the waters rise, sweeping away the old world and allowing a new, purer one to emerge. This tale, while harrowing, also speaks of renewal and the hope for a better future, themes that resonate deeply within the human spirit. In Aztec society, Kalkayatlikyu's festivals were grand events marked by both solemnity and celebration. The most significant of these was Atalcahualo, a festival held in early spring to honor the waters and ensure their beneficial presence throughout the growing season. During Atalcahualo, children were often chosen for sacrificial rites, a somber reminder of the gravity of seeking divine favor. These ceremonies, though difficult for us to comprehend today, were seen as essential acts of devotion and survival. Kalkayatlikyu's temples and altars were places of reverence and beauty. Decorated with images of water, jade, and aquatic creatures, these sacred spaces were designed to invoke her presence and favor. Priests and priestesses, devoted to her service, would conduct daily rituals, maintaining a constant connection between the goddess and her people. These acts of worship were believed to keep the balance of nature in check, ensuring harmony between the elements and human life. The legacy of Kalkayatlikyu is one of profound respect for the forces of nature. Her myths and rituals teach us about the essential bond between humanity and the natural world. They remind us of the importance of living in harmony with our environment, recognizing both its beauty and its power. In today's world, where environmental issues are at the forefront of global concern, the lessons of Kalkayatlikyu are more relevant than ever. Kalkayatlikyu's story is a testament to the enduring power of mythology. Through her, we see the ancient Aztecs' understanding of the world, their reverence for nature, and their recognition of the delicate balance that sustains life. Her influence permeated every aspect of their society, from agriculture and childbirth to morality and spirituality. She was a symbol of life's sustaining force and a reminder of the ever-present potential for renewal and transformation. As we reflect on the legacy of Kalkayadlikyu, we are reminded of the timeless connection between humanity and the natural world. Her myths and worship practices offer a window into a culture that understood the importance of respecting and honoring the forces that sustain us. In the flowing waters and the quiet depths, the spirit of Kalkayadlikyu continues to inspire, reminding us of our place within the great cycle of life. The grandeur of Mount Olympus was incomplete without her, a figure both revered and feared, whose presence commanded respect and instilled awe. Hera, the Greek queen of the gods, was more than just the wife of Zeus, she was a force of nature, embodying the complexities of power, loyalty, and wrath. Her eyes, often described as oxen-like, held the depth of the skies and the weight of her divine authority. Hera's jealousy is legendary, a trait that humanizes her even as it underscores her divinity. The tales of her fury are woven into the fabric of Greek mythology, each one a testament to her unyielding nature. It wasn't just Zeus's numerous infidelities that ignited her rage, but the humiliation and betrayal she felt. Each affair, each child born of another woman, was a slight against her status as queen. Hera's jealousy was not a pity emotion but a profound response to the constant erosion of her dignity and position. One of the most poignant stories illustrating Hera's jealousy is that of Hercules. Born from Zeus's union with the mortal woman Alcmene, Hercules was a living reminder of Zeus's disloyalty. Hera's wrath towards him was relentless. From sending serpents to kill him in his crib to driving him to madness later in life, causing him to commit acts he could never forgive himself for, Hera's actions were severe. Yet, they were driven by a deep-seated pain and desire for justice in the face of her husband's flagrant betrayals. Her jealousy also spurred some of the most remarkable acts of magic in Greek mythology. Hera's magical powers were vast, often used to exact revenge or to protect her own interests. One of her most famous acts of magic was the transformation of Io, one of Zeus's lovers, into a cow. This act was not just an act of spite, but a strategic move to keep Io away from Zeus's embrace and under Hera's control. Such transformations were common in her repertoire, showcasing her ability to alter reality itself to suit her purposes. Hera's influence extended far beyond her jealous vendettas. As the goddess of marriage and childbirth, she held sway over the most sacred aspects of human life. 
Her blessings were sought in wedding ceremonies, where she was invoked to ensure fidelity and harmony. In childbirth, women prayed to her for safe deliveries and healthy children. Hera's dual role as a protector of marital sanctity and a vengeful enforcer of her own was a reflection of the delicate balance she maintained between nurturing and punishing. Her influence in Greek mythology is omnipresent, her character intricately linked with the fates of gods and mortals alike. In the myth of Jason and the Argonauts, Hera plays a crucial role. Despite her notorious jealousy, she extends her protection to Jason, guiding him in his quest for the Golden Fleece. This act of support was motivated by her anger towards Peleus, the usurper of Jason's throne, showing that Hera's vengeance could also be channeled into acts of protection and support for those she deemed worthy. Hera's complexity as a goddess is further highlighted in her relationships with other deities. With Athena, she shared a mutual respect and understanding, despite their differing domains. Athena, the goddess of wisdom and war, often found herself aligned with Hera's goals, particularly when it came to upholding order and justice. Their combined efforts during the Trojan War, where they supported the Greeks, underscored their formidable partnership. Yet, her relationships were not always harmonious. Her constant conflicts with Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty, were rooted in their contrasting natures. Aphrodite's carefree and sometimes reckless pursuit of love clashed with Hera's desire for order and fidelity. These conflicts often played out in the moral realm, where their influences would cause turmoil and strife among men and women, highlighting the gods' intricate involvement in human affairs. Hera's presence is also deeply felt in the Homeric epics. In the Iliad, her support for the Greeks and her relentless opposition to the Trojans demonstrate her strategic mind and unwavering resolve. Her manipulation of events, often behind the scenes, shows her as a master tactician, using her influence to shape the course of the war. Her interactions with Zeus during this time are particularly telling, revealing a complex marriage filled with both cooperation and strife. Despite her formidable nature, Hera's moments of vulnerability reveal a goddess who is deeply affected by the actions of those around her. Her heartache over Zeus's infidelities and her subsequent reactions reflect a being who, despite her divine power, experiences emotions profoundly similar to those of mortals. This duality, of immense power and deep emotional capacity, makes Hera one of the most compelling figures in Greek mythology. The tales of Hera's jealousy and magical powers are not just stories of wrath and vengeance, they are narratives that explore themes of loyalty, justice, and the complexities of power. Hera's actions, though often harsh, are driven by a deep sense of her own worth and the rightful respect she demands. In her, we see a goddess who refuses to be diminished, who fights fiercely for her place in a world where even the divine are not free from betrayal and pain. Hera's legacy in Greek mythology is one of strength and resilience. Her stories resonate with the timeless struggle for respect and recognition, the battle to maintain one's dignity in the face of continuous affronts. Through her, we understand that even the gods are subject to the same emotions and trials that define the human experience. Hera, with her unwavering determination and formidable presence, remains a powerful symbol of the complexities of power, loyalty, and the enduring human spirit. The story of Arachne begins with a young woman whose hands could weave magic. In a small village, there lived a weaver whose tapestries were so beautiful they seemed to capture the essence of life itself. Arachne was not born into nobility or bestowed with divine gifts, but her talent with the loom made her the subject of admiration and envy alike. Her skill was so extraordinary that whispers spread, suggesting she might have been blessed by the gods themselves. Arachne's confidence grew with each masterpiece she created. Her fame reached far and wide, drawing visitors who marveled at the lifelike images she could conjure with thread. Pride swelled within her, and soon, Arachne's humility gave way to arrogance. She began to believe that her skill surpassed that of anyone, even the gods. With this belief came a dangerous audacity, and Arachne openly challenged Athena, the goddess of wisdom and crafts, declaring that she was the superior weaver. Athena, hearing of this bold claim, decided to confront Arachne. Disguised as an old woman, the goddess approached her and warned her to show humility and respect towards the deities. 
But Arachne, blinded by her pride, dismissed the old woman's advice with disdain, insisting that she could best Athena in a weaving contest. Revealing her true form, Athena accepted the challenge, and the two set up their looms side by side. The air was thick with tension as the contest began. Athena wove a tapestry depicting the gods and their glory, illustrating scenes of their power and benevolence towards humankind. Each thread shimmered with divine light, telling stories of wisdom, justice, and the blessings the gods bestowed upon the world. Arachne, undeterred, wove a different tale. Her tapestry was a bold statement, illustrating the gods' flaws and the injustices they inflicted upon mortals. Scenes of deception, betrayal, and punishment at the hands of the gods filled her tapestry. It was a daring, beautiful, and provocative work, a clear defiance of the gods' authority. As the final threads were put in place, both tapestries were breathtaking, each telling a story of unparalleled artistry. Athena examined Arachne's work and, despite the blasphemous content, couldn't deny its perfection. But the defiance, the audacity of a mere mortal to depict the gods' failings, was an unforgivable act of hubris. In her anger, Athena tore Arachne's tapestry to shreds. The goddess's wrath was swift and terrible. She struck Arachne down, but instead of ending her life, Athena transformed her into a creature that would forever hang from threads. Arachne's body twisted and shrank until she became a spider, condemned to weave for eternity. The tale of Arachne is a poignant reminder of the perils of hubris. Her transformation was not merely a punishment, but a symbol of the delicate balance between pride and respect, skill and humility. Arachne's fate serves as a cautionary tale about the consequences of overstepping bounds and challenging the divine order. In a new form, Arachne's legacy lived on, and she continued to weave intricate webs, each one a testament to her unmatched skill and the curse of her pride. Her transformation into a spider symbolizes the perpetual struggle and the intricate beauty she once created with her loan. The spider's web, delicate and precise, is a reminder of Arachne's extraordinary talent and the dire price she paid for her arrogance. Themes of hubris and punishment are woven into the fabric of Arachne's myth, illustrating the dangers of excessive pride and the importance of humility. Her story resonates through time, teaching that talent and skill must be balanced with respect and reverence for those who hold greater power. The gods, with their immense might, were to be honored, not challenged, and Arachne's tragic end underscores the timeless truth that pride often precedes a fall. As a spider, Arachne's life was transformed, but her spirit remained in every web spun. Each delicate thread she created was a reflection of her former life, a reminder of her exceptional talent and the consequences of her defiance. Her tale, though sorrowful, is rich with emotion and serves as a powerful narrative about the limits of human ambition and the importance of recognizing and respecting the divine order. The myth of Arachne is more than just a story, it is a lesson etched into the collective memory of human culture. Her transformation and the themes of hubris and punishment are universal, echoing through various cultures and histories. Arachne's story continues to captivate, reminding us of the fine line between confidence and arrogance, and the importance of humility in the face of greatness. In the end, Arachne's myth is a tapestry itself, woven with threads of pride, skill, punishment, and transformation. It's a narrative that captures the imagination and evokes deep emotions, reminding us of our place in the world and the dangers of overreaching. Her story is a timeless cautionary tale, beautifully tragic and eternally relevant, resonating with the truth that the gods' favor is not to be taken lightly, and humility is a virtue to be cherished. From the shadows of ancient lore, the figures of witches emerge, casting their long, mysterious shadows across the ages. Their tales, whispered in the dark corners of history, continue to enchant and terrify, weaving their magic into the very fabric of modern culture. These ancient witches, with their potent blend of fear and fascination, have left an indelible mark on our collective consciousness, their influence as powerful today as it was in the distant past. Their stories are as diverse as the cultures from which they spring, yet they share common threads that bind them together. The ancient witches were often women of formidable power and knowledge, standing at the crossroads of the natural and supernatural worlds. They were healers, seers, and keepers of arcane wisdom, their abilities both revered and feared by those around them. 
In the heart of their legends lies a potent mix of themes that continue to resonate. The power of transformation, the duality of creation and destruction, the pursuit of forbidden knowledge, these are the elements that give their stories a timeless appeal. They embody the eternal struggle between light and dark, good and evil, and the fine line between them. Take, for instance, the story of Hecate, the Greek goddess of witchcraft. She stands at the crossroads, a liminal figure guiding souls and wielding the power of night and moon. Her legacy is one of profound transformation and mystery, her presence felt in the whispers of the wind and the shadows of the night. Hecate's story speaks to the human fascination with the unknown, the eternal quest for knowledge, and the fear of the dark forces that lie just beyond the reach of the light. Similarly, the tale of Baba Yaga, the Slavic witch, captures the imagination with its blend of fear and wonder. Living in a hut that stands on chicken legs, she is a figure of both terror and wisdom, a test for the brave and the foolish alike. Baba Yaga's story is a lesson in courage and cunning, a reminder that the path to wisdom is fraught with peril and that true strength lies in the ability to face one's fears. These ancient witches also reflect the cultural attitudes and social dynamics of their times. Often, they were depicted as outsiders, women who defied societal norms and paid the price for their defiance. Their stories are a testament to the struggles of women throughout history, their power both feared and suppressed. Yet, they also embody resilience and strength, their enduring legacy a tribute to the indomitable spirit of those who dare to challenge the status quo. The influence of these ancient witches extends far beyond their historical and cultural origins. In modern times, they have become powerful symbols in literature, film, and popular culture. From Shakespeare's Macbeth to the Harry Potter series, the figure of the witch continues to captivate and inspire. They serve as powerful archetypes, their stories a reflection of our deepest fears and desires. In literature, witches often symbolize the power of the natural world and the mysteries that lie beyond human understanding. They are the keepers of ancient knowledge, their magic a metaphor for the hidden forces that shape our lives. In film, they are both villains and heroines, their stories a reflection of the complex nature of power and the consequences of its misuse. The enduring appeal of witches in modern culture is also a testament to their versatility as symbols. They can represent empowerment and rebellion, wisdom and danger, creation and destruction. Their stories resonate because they speak to the universal human experience, the eternal struggle between order and chaos, light and dark, knowledge and ignorance. In reflecting on the legacy of these ancient witches, we find lessons that are as relevant today as they were in the past. Their stories remind us of the power of knowledge and the dangers of hubris, the importance of courage and resilience, and the need to balance light and dark within ourselves. They teach us that true power lies not in domination but in understanding, not in fear but in wisdom. The tales of these witches are more than just stories, they are windows into the human soul, reflections of our deepest fears and highest aspirations. They challenge us to look beyond the surface, to seek the hidden truths that lie beneath the veneer of reality. They remind us that the world is full of magic and mystery, and that the path to understanding is one of courage and curiosity. As we continue to tell their stories, the ancient witches live on, their legacy woven into the tapestry of our culture. They are the guardians of the old ways, the keepers of the sacred knowledge, and the voices of wisdom that echo through the ages. Their influence is a testament to the enduring power of myth and the timeless appeal of the supernatural. In the end, the legacy of these ancient witches is a reflection of our own journey, our quest for knowledge and understanding, and our struggle to balance the forces of light and dark within ourselves. Their stories are a reminder that the true magic lies not in the spells we cast, but in the wisdom we seek, the courage we show, and the understanding we gain. And as long as we continue to seek, to question, and to dream, the legacy of these ancient witches will continue to inspire and enchant, lighting our way through the shadows of the unknown.